This video will be about natural and forced convection in porous insulation materials and cavities. How is airflow influencing heat transfer in building envelope and porous insulation? Examples will be given for thermal effect of wind, heat transfer across a cavity, example with the window with window panes, effective thermal conductivity of porous materials, convection inside thermal insulation. This picture il illustrates how air can blow towards the building and flow inside a building envelope. And if cold air is penetrating the building envelope in this way, it will, of course, deteriorate the insulation capability. It will pick up heat and, and cool the building, and we don't get the thermal capability of the building envelope like we want. This can be uh, uh, handled by a continuous air wind barrier made out of foil or boards and, and in this way eliminate the possibility of wind to entering the building envelope. We can have natural convection inside the structures. On the left hand side we see a, a wall with a, a hot side and a cold side, could be inside and outside. And since we have a buoyancy effect that air that is warmer can flow upwards, on the cold side flow downwards, there might be a circulation and a natural convection uh, of heat transfer, of heat flow. And on the right hand side we, we see a similar thing with the horizontal, this could be the attic floor insulation. And this is kind of a stability problem, so if we have sufficiently high temperature difference for instance, and air that is a bit warmer starts to flow upwards. It will bring down <coughs> colder air from, from the top and there will be a kind of stable circulation of air in this way. And that will, of course, increase the heat transfer. Uh, we have done substantial amount of research on attic floor insulation. <coughs> and we see some examples here. To the left, it's a for an ex experiment in the freezing room. And the right hand, we see a simulation of the uh, convection process in, in thick, looseful insulation layers. Uh, in in su Swedish cases, we can have up to 700 millimeters of insulation on, an, on, a, on the attic floor. So what can happen is that in, in some parts, uh, the air, the warm air from, from the bottom surface, the warm bottom surface starts flowing up. We get a plume of uh, warm air flowing up and in the same way this will be exchanged with cold air flowing downwards. We have the blue zones. So in other examples of this could be air movements in cavities and air gaps inside building envelopes where we have this type of, once again, natural convection phenomena. We have here two cases. Uh, we have pictures below. The first part is just a, a 100 millimeter air space. So there are two layers, one warm on the left side, left hand side, on the right hand side, the cold one, <coughs> and just air in between. And on the right hand picture we have a construction instead of, we fill the gap with insulation. And uh, uh, we have some, some rough numbers of uh, and the, the, air, uh, the, the red arrows show also the dignity of the different uh, heat modes, heat transfer modes. And we see the radiation. So the main part of the heat transfer is due to radiation across the airspace. And we do also have some kind of convection, rotation by natural convection, and conduction in, in the air. And we know that air in itself is quite a, have quite a low heat conductivity. So the conduction is low. And the numbers, rough numbers, is 5% of the heat transfer is due to conduction. 18% is due to convection and 77% due to radiation. And we, if we consider that as a kind of a material inside with a kind of apparent thermal conductivity, the lambda value or the thermal conductivity would be 0.5. We turn to the right hand picture with uh, insulation instead. We, the main part of the heat transfer is due to conduction in, in the air, while the convection is basically eliminated. And we still have radiation flowing from fibers to fibers and through the porous uh, material, in, inside the porous material and contribute to 15% of the heat transfer. So let's look at, at a two-pane window. 
to illustrate the phenomena. We still have there this possibility of natural convection, and we know that if we make it more narrow, the ratio between the height and the air gap distance increases, uh, the convection would be uh, diminished. So it would be too much uh, resistance towards air flows in the gap if we have a very narrow gap. And we do have the conduction in the gas, it's an important heat transfer phenomena. And, and if we put in a noble gas like argon instead of air, we will bring down the heat transfer in that way. And we know that from the previous slide that radiation is important. And in two pane window, we can reduce this radiation by using low emissivity coating. And this, this part is independent of the, the gap distance. Here we have some, <coughs> some uh, <coughs> numbers for thermal conductivity of glass fiber insulation. And we have on the vertical axis the, the thermal conductivity of, of different uh, heat transfer mechanisms, the kind of the parent thermal conductivity for these parts. Uh, on, on the horizontal axis, we have the porosity or the density in the lower horizontal uh, axis. we can find that heat transfer, the main heat transfer component is due to heat conduction in air. We don't find any natural convection normally in regular glass fiber for these cases, for these densities. And radiation for low density insulation, the material, uh, low density materials, the effect of radiation could be quite important, but for high density it's very low. And the contribution from heat conduction in the solid fiber increases with density, but with uh, not too high density, it's, it's a very minor part of the thermal conductivity. So then the summary. Wind pressure on the billing envelope can cause forced convection. It is reduced by using wind barriers. Temperature differences across the billing envelope insulation can cause natural convection in cavities and insulation materials. Convection is reduced by using insulation materials with sufficient density. Heat conduction in the air is the dominating heat transfer mechanism in thermal insulation. Natural convection and radiation between the surfaces are dominating the heat transfer in wide cavities.